Hello everyone, Gilly here. Today I wanted to continue solving these Game of Codes problems in Event Store, actually. So I'm going to solve the second one today, this problem called Islands. I've already solved it in F Sharp, but I figured another Event Store solution would be fun. Now, this problem, the way I'm going to solve it, in my opinion, is not particularly well suited to Event Store. That being said, it's going to be a fun problem, and it's going to illustrate a lot of the different parts of Event Store. So if you're not familiar with this problem, the idea is that you're discovering a new island to inhabit. And what you're caring about are these particular resources. You're looking for the island that maximizes these resources, water, wood, coal, etc. Each of these resources has a relative priority or a relative value or weight, if you will, to say how much you care about it. So water is a pretty high value commodity. You want water. You want to not go thirsty and die. So basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be given a bunch of input rows, which each one of these rows represents an input of measurements. It's a set of measurements which correspond to these keys here. So in this first one, water would be 3,000, 5,000 would be the wood, coal would be 50, etc., and so on and so forth. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this model, which I had never heard about until I solved this problem, called the weighted product model, which may look a little daunting at first, but it's actually not so bad. We're going to use this model to evaluate which island is the winner, which one would be the best for us to take over or live at. And not just the best. We don't just care about the best. We really care about, to, we want to see them all in rank. We want to see them in the order that they would be best suited for us, where in this example, two would mean this second one, zero, one, two. One would mean the first or the oneth, and zero would mean the zeroth. This solution overall is not gonna be super trivial, so I'm going to really quickly flip over to my drawing pad and show you kind of what I have in mind so that you can keep up with what's happening. So first and foremost, I think I'm gonna have a stream. Most things start with a stream. And I'm just going to call it measurements. And measurements is going to track each time we measure an island, each time we've gotten a full set of measurements about that island, it's going to track all of that. I typically like to write streams with a little curly, like kind of a river or a stream, flowing stream. So off of this measurements stream, I'm going to write a projection. If you're not familiar with projections, they're basically ways to run over a stream and perform some calculation, um, maintain some state, what have you. And this is gonna be called stream by island. And basically what stream by island is gonna do is it's going to look at each measurement and, I'll use a box to denote a projection. It's gonna look at each measurement and figure out what that means to the different streams. Now I haven't actually talked about what these streams are yet, so I'll talk about it now. Um, it's going to emit to them. It's going to emit to streams which just represent each island. It's kind of the idea. So if we go back to the code or this example here, zero would be this first one. So you can think of that kind of as a batch of measurements or a bag of measurements along with an index for the island. So we might have a stream for island zero, for example. We might have a stream for island two. I'm just abbreviating it here as an I. We might have a stream for island three, etc. But basically, these streams are going to track two things. They're going to track two kinds of events, which are going to be, uh, basically, I was measured. And something else was measured. Other was measured. And once that's done, we'll have all of these streams which have everything that's happened to them and everything that's happened to the other islands that they know about or that have come into the system after them. And once we have that, we can build another projection. And if you remember, we're going to use the weighted product model here, this WPM. I'm just going to call this weighted product model. I'll abbreviate it WPM for brevity here. And this projection is going to go over each stream, and it's basically going to spit out facts. Like, in this example here, it might find that stream 2, the first one's the best one, by the way, is better than stream 1. So it might spit out a fact like an event or a fact like stream, or sorry, island. We're talking about islands. That's the domain of the problem. Island, what did I say? Two, better, has better WPM than one. So we might spit out facts like that. 
Now, once we have facts like that, these, these will live on their own stream. I don't know what I'll call it. Maybe I'll call it like WPM facts. Um, and that'll just represent our determinations about the WPM of each stream. And once we have that, what I'm going to do is at the very end, I'm going to make a query. And queries don't really have names. They're kind of ephemeral things, just for getting answers. And it's going to rearrange these facts to give us the actual answer list, if you will. It should, in the end of this example we got here, give us 21043, 21043, um, 5. So that's the general idea. Measurements, all measurements go into one stream. Those streams, that stream gets fanned out to a bunch of island-specific streams. Um, those island-specific streams have a WPM calculation that's done, which results in facts about WPM. And in the end, we're going to query over those facts. So here in my handy-dandy event store UI, the first projection that I'd like to write, if we go back, is this stream by island projection. So let's get about writing that. And basically what it's going to do, let me hide my keyboards or my drawing pad so I don't accidentally trip over it while I'm going. What it's going to do is it's going to query from a specific stream. And as I said, we're just going to call that stream measurements. And when, so we probably need to store a little bit of state here. So I'm going to use init. And init's just a way to build the initial state that this projection will have. And basically what I want to store is I want to store known islands, I think is what I'm looking for. And I'll just keep an array of those. By default, we don't know about any islands, so I'll keep it as an empty array. All right. So the only real measurements or the only real events that are going to happen on this measurement stream are going to be island measured. And... If you're familiar with projections, you take the old state and then you take the new event or the current event that you're processing. And basically what I want to do here is I want to emit an event that's going to say that this island was measured for the first time or I was measured. And I also want to emit for every known island another event saying that another island was measured. I don't know if this is the typical way of doing things. Normally you kind of have a stream per entity. So in this case, my islands would be like entities, but it's a little weird that they kind of know about all the other ones. I don't know if this is the right way to do it. In fact, I'd love to get some feedback on this from someone who knows more about event store, but this is how I'm gonna solve it for the sake of this problem for now. So first thing, let's do an emit, and you can just do that by writing the word emit, and then you give a stream name. I'm gonna use handy dandy ES6 notation, and I'm gonna say island. And this is gonna be a stream for a particular island. So I haven't really sketched out what this event's gonna look like, so let's just really quickly draw out what it might look like up here. Maybe it'll have, I don't know, an island ID. Sure, we can do that, or island index. I like index better, because that's actually what it is which might be zero. And then it'll have measurements. And we'll say measurements is an object which has properties like these. So it might have water, which has some amount, you know, 3000. That'll be decent for what our events can look like coming in. We can kind of define it however we want because there's no real device here that's doing measurements, you know. Later I'm gonna just post in events that look like this to make it work. But right now there's no real events like that. So you can get the data of an event by saying e.data. And then I want island index. Island index, cool. The second thing that emit takes is it takes an event name and I'm just gonna say measured. It's already in the context of an island. I'm just gonna say it was measured. That way there's not a conflict with this island measured here. And then I don't think the island, let's see, does the island need to know about itself? It w might be useful for the island to know its index. So I'm just going to propagate all of the data from the original event through. Now you might want to use a link to here. It's not really a whole lot 
different in this case. That might actually be a little more optimized, but I'm not really doing this for the sake of optimization. I'm doing it just to solve the problem for now. So I think that's actually it for this. Oh no, <laughs> I missed, ah, very good. I missed the fact that I want to do a couple of things. I need to save that I know this island now. E dot data dot island index, I'll just copy it from here. Um, but before I save that I know this island, I need to loop over the other known islands and say some other island was measured. So to do that, I can say s dot known islands. Oops. For each island index. And then basically what I want to do then is I want to measure, I want to emit just like I'm emitting here, except this should be this specific island index. So we're just going to fan out this event to all the other island streams. And I want to just say other measured. Not the greatest name, but basically it's just a way to say something else was measured, just so you know. All right, cool. I believe this will work. I don't think there's a great way to run it from here and verify it. So let's go ahead and save it off. This is going to be a continuous projection. It's going to be able to emit, as you can see. And then I'll say track emitted streams, which I think is just in general kind of a good thing to do. Okay, so it looks like it's good. I don't see any blatant syntax errors. It's a little hard to know if it works or not. So I'm going to go and behind the scenes translate this data to events and I'm going to push them through the system or I'll just get them ready and then you can watch me push them through the system. All right, so I finally got an, an event converted over. Um, I converted the other ones over too, but I just wanted to show you what one might look like. It's pretty straightforward. This is exactly, if you go back to our projection, what we were expecting. We have island index and then measurements and then the actual keys followed by the actual values of those keys. It's a little verbose, but I think it's probably the most clear way to get it done. So I'm gonna take these events now and I'm just gonna pump them into event store. I'll show you how I would do one if you're curious, but I'm not gonna do more because it's kind of boring. If we go to stream browser, uh, we don't have a stream for this yet, so I'm just gonna hit this add event button. The data is going to look like this. The stream ID is going to be measurements, which I'm going to copy from here just to make sure my typos get propagated, which is super important. If you're going to misspell it, at least misspell it consistently. That's what I always say. And then the event type is island measured. All right, so let's try to save that. Cool, we saved it. And then if we go back, we can see that our projection processed it, which is kind of cool. It knows about island zero, and it should have emitted to the island zero stream. So let's really quickly see that it did. Ah, oh, yep, there it is. Island zero was measured. Awesome. So, so I don't bore you too much. I'm gonna go post the rest of those events in. All right, so at this point I've pushed all the events through and as you can see, our projection has handled them like a champ. It knows now about all six islands, which is pretty cool. Let's go to stream browser real quick and kind of just make sure the world looks right. So if we look in measurements, as you can see, we got all six events starting at zero. And then if you look at each island, we should be able to see, yep, so the very first one, island zero, because it was the first one, it's compared with everyone after it because each other one gets measured after it. So this looks correct. This looks pretty good. Let's look at one of these. This last one should be the last index or five. Awesome. Cool. Let's look at island four. Yep, just it and five, and then five should just know about itself. So now for the fun part, let's go and let's write our WPM query, or projection rather. I said query, I meant projection. And this is gonna be our weighted product model. So, new query, or new projection. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna do something slightly different. It's gonna say from category, island for each stream, which basically is a mechanism that will partition this for each stream. So when it runs, it'll only be in the context of that one stream when 
And what we want to do is we want to basically um, track what's going on here. So we have two kinds of events coming in. We have measured and we have other measured. Let's handle measured first because it makes sense to handle that one first. When we get a new event measured, oh, by the way, default state, I believe is just an empty object in case you're curious. So when we get an empty event measured, basically what we want to do is we want to track it. So let's have an initial state and it's going to be really boring by default. It's just going to be index, which will be what's my index. We'll just start it at null. I don't particularly like nulls, but it works. And then measurements. And I'll start that as null as null uh, at null as well. And when I get an event in, we're just going to store off its properties. So s dot index is going to be something and then s dot measurements is going to be something. And we should really get a measured first. Measured is like initially measured in this case. Of course, that's not always the case. You could remeasure now and find that it's changed, but we're not going to handle that as part of this. So if I go to stream browser, let's just look at a sample here. Let's look at island three. So what does a measured look like? It has an island index, which we're just saving as index. So it's e.data.index, island index. And then it has measurements, which are one for one with our other measurements. e.data.measurements. Okay, so if Alan gets measured, we're gonna do that. Let's, just for the fun of it, talk about what happens if we don't get an other measured ever. If we've only ever measured one island, then what we would want to do is we'd basically want to say that it was measured, but you can't really do, if you're familiar with weighted product model, which again, I wasn't when I first did this problem, you can't really do a weighted product model with just one thing. The idea is you're trying to choose the best of a whole bunch of things. And if you only have one, it's the best, it just wins. So let's actually emit an event here. And I think I said I was gonna call a stream something like weighted product model facts. And I'm just gonna say island. Okay, this is really, really dumb, but it's like, it's kind of like island, island best or island known. I can't really find a great wording for it, I don't think, but basically the data is gonna be super simple. It's just going to be s.index. So index is s.index. I'm just gonna say I know about this island. That way, if we got a data set, which we already don't have one, but if we got a data set where there was only one event that came in, it would win. It's by default preferential. It wins just out of the fact of it existing. A little silly, might not even need to do it, but let's do it for fun, why not? The other event that we care about here is other measured. And this is where it's gonna be really interesting and fun. So if we get an other measured, steal that. If we get an other measured, we basically have two options. Using WPM, which if you haven't looked at it, I'd really recommend looking at it, but it's not really that complicated. The idea is if you're comparing two rows of values with weights, we'll call those rows A1 and A2. What you wanna do is you wanna divide them together, A1 divided by A2 for each value, take it to the power, take each term to the power of the weight and then multiply them together as a product. And that's it. That's all you need to do to apply WPM. Mathematically, now you have to do one little decision on the end where you ask, is that product greater than one? If the product is greater than one, that means the numerator wins, or A1 in this case. If it's not greater than one, then A2 wins. So it's really just a way to compare these two values and pick one that is preferential. And again, this is called the weighted product model. I, if I haven't said it enough, that was probably past it. So basically those are the two cases. Um, we care about our weights. So I'm gonna bring our weights in as a, another JavaScript object right now. That's gonna look a lot like our measurements. All right, I've brought our weights in and I've just hard coded them as a const at the top of the file. So that will be useful in calculating our weighted product model. So again, how you do it is you go across each row and per element you divide them and then you take them to the power of the weight respectively take the product at the end and then compare it with one. So let's do all of that. And I'm just gonna encapsulate all of that in a function called 
first, and I'll, you know, I'll do this the fun way. First has better weighted product model. And that'll take in a first and a second. And these will just be two sets of measurements. And basically now we, I'm just gonna brute force it. <sighs> mm. Yeah, I'll brute force it for now and I'll, I'll refactor it a little bit later. So this is gonna be really ugly and really boring and really tedious. So I'll just hack it out and then show you the result. Well, let me do it for one term. How about that? I lied. So what do we want? We want math dot, math dot power, and we want first dot water divided by second dot water. And we want that taken to the power of the weight. So weight dot water. Yeah, that'll work. So we just need to do that for each key and then take the product of all of them and then compare with one. All right, so as hideously as possible, I hacked out that code. Um, oh, you should have seen my face. I was cringing the whole time. If you'd like to see a cleaner solution, I'd really recommend checking out the F-sharp solution I did a little earlier. It's much nicer than this. It's a little more functional, if you will. So basically in the end, we want to compare this with one. If it's greater than one, that means the first has the better WPM. This is ugly. You could probably do a little bit of JavaScript foo, like looping over the keys, and then do like a product function or reduce with the times in it. That would be cool. But this will probably work good enough for us, I guess, unless I made some subtle typo in the middle here, which is very possible because there are a lot of copy-paste uh, opportunities for error. So if we get some other measure, then what we want to do is we want to say if the first has better WPM, the first being our measurements, so S dot measurements. I feel really hesitant typing that word out for some reason. If our measurements has a better WPM than E dot data dot measurements, or the other one we measured's measurements, well, then we're gonna admit that we are better. So we're gonna admit to the same stream. This is gonna contain all of our facts about what we found while we were doing this. And this is gonna be um, island found, or preference found. Basically, we're saying we found a preference by our weights. We might want to event out the weights so that in the future we could like cross check this or like, because it's really dependent on these weights, right? Like if we val valued gold as the highest resource all of a sudden and everything else didn't matter, then the sa these answers would change. They wouldn't really be facts anymore. This WPM is based on that weight. So we might really, if we're doing this for real, we want, might want a model that's a little more flexible about that. But for now, I'm just gonna hard code everything around those weights. And I'm gonna say preference f was found and there's a winner. And the winner is gonna be this one because we found we had a better WPM. And there's a loser. Whenever there's a winner, there's a loser. And the loser is e.data dot island index. So the other one, in this case, lost. Now, of course, we need an else here, and the else is gonna be exactly the same, except our winner and loser flip-flop. So this is really the loser now. Loser, and then this is the winner now. now I'm a little bit skeptical that I got all that right on my first pass, but let's give it a go, fingers crossed. All right, so I ran it, and it seems to be doing okay. It didn't falter or anything, so that's a good sign. Let's look at the state at a particular partition. The island is zero, has its index, and it has its measurements. It's gonna be doing a compare for everything that it sees, and it's gonna be emitting to this WPM fact stream. So much fun, we're so close. So let's look at what that stream looks like, WPM facts. Awesome, this looks about right. What we should see, just as kind of a sanity check, we should see five islands being known. One, two, three, four, five. That's looking good. And we should see some preferences found. Um, oh, are there 21 events here? Oh no, six. I was missing one. Island known, there should be six because we're zero based indexing and we're going to five, duh. Now preferences found. Let's look at kind of these preference facts. These should be really interesting. So what happened was, we discovered a new event. If we go back, we discovered an island, and then we found a preference. It's a little weird to me. Um, 
Oh, no, that's fine. We discovered an island, then we found a preference because we emit the event saying other was found first. So we should have found here. Oh, sad day. Opening a new tabs doesn't seem to work. That would be a good PR. We found that zero, one was better than zero. So we found that as a fact, one was better than zero. So if we go back to the score, we should see one in front of zero. Yep, the earlier ones, the topmost ones mean it's better. So that's good. So we have all these facts now. And the last part of this, if you go back, if you remember back to what we planned on doing, the last part of this was to go over these facts and generate a query that'll just answer the actual question of what's the rank, what's the overall rank here. All right, so last but not least, instead of writing something that generates the answer here, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. If you'd like, you can go feel free and generate something that writes the answer. It's actually kind of a fun challenge given a bunch of facts about where values should be compared to each other. But I'm actually gonna flip it on its head and I'm gonna write something, I'm gonna write a query that validates this against the facts. It's going to run through the facts and make sure they're all consistent with this expected answer. So to do that, I'll hit this query button up here. And then I'll say const expected equals this. Basically what I'm gonna do with this query is I'm just gonna track facts that are bad if we come across any. So the idea for that is if we go back to our projection, we're emitting these preference found events. And basically what we wanna say is, what is the index of the winner? And that's just gonna be expected index of e.data.winner, which if you look back here, it's these kind of keys, these kind of objects on the end, which have a winner and a loser. Also, we're gonna take the loser index, which is gonna be pretty much the same thing, except we're asking it about the, win the loser. And this model is really easy to validate using an expectation like we have. Basically, we're just gonna say if the, in the winner index is greater than or equal to the loser index, meaning the winner value is somewhere after the loser value. So if we accidentally switched and said that one is supposed to be better than two, that would be an example of when the winner value is greater than the loser value. We'll just s.push e. We'll just track all the events we could count them, I guess, but let's just track all the events for which our model is wrong. So this should be good. Queries are nice because you can just run them right on the spot. And it wrote out an empty array, which is pretty good feeling. I think that it's right. Let's flip it just to make sure we're really doing something. So this should actually output all events. It's basically saying they're all bad. Every preference found event is bad. It looks like we have a lot, not entirely sure how many, but that was pretty fun. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, if you like, it would be kind of a fun challenge to write one that builds this result off of these preference found. And I encourage you to give it a shot. And if you have any questions or ideas on how to improve the solution, like, like I said at the beginning, I don't think it's really a great problem for event store. Um, let me know.